welcome to my tutorial on how to realistically enhance a portrait in Adobe Photoshop. I chose this particular portrait uh, partly because I think that she is a beautiful model and I love her eyes and the color of her hair and I also think that it is a perfect portrait to work on because she doesn't appear to be wearing any makeup and I don't see any evidence of any past photo manipulation. So we pretty much have uh, a blank canvas to work on here. So your first step is going to be opening up your portrait and just take a moment to evaluate what areas you would like to improve. In this case, um, there are some subtle but visible flaws on her skin that I plan to enhance uh, somewhat to make her look a little more polished without looking fake or uh, like a mannequin. So here you see some subtle uh, redness, uh, some enlarged pores around the nose, the cheeks next to the nose, um, on the chin. She has some dark circles under her eyes and those are the areas I'm going to work on in this tutorial. So once you've opened up the photo that you would like to work on and taken a little time to work you know, to look it over, then duplicate the background layer. This will allow you to basically work non-destructively and um, also at a later step you'll most likely want to blend it into the background a bit, but don't worry about that yet. So. Step one, go to the Spot Healing Brush Tool. There's this band-aid here, and it's the very first one. This tool is for very small flaws. Let me zoom in a little bit. Uh, not large areas, there's another tool for large areas. But first we're going to just look for any spots, such as pimples, scars, etc. Um, there aren't too many real obvious ones on her face, but uh, there is this little spot right here by her chin and it's actually a fairly tricky spot because if you notice there's light and then there's light skin and then there's shadow right here under her lip and that type of change can actually fool the tool and make it, um, it, it confuses it, makes it not know which particular uh, color and texture to replicate so we have to be careful. Um, set the hardness to around 50% so that the brush isn't too soft or too hard, somewhere in the middle. And I'm going to reduce the size a little bit, but basically you s choose a brush size that's just fairly slightly larger than the flaw that you want to correct. So since I don't want to fool this, into thinking that there should be a shadow here. I chose actually a slightly smaller brush. So I'm actually going to do two little swipes there. If I had chosen a bigger brush, what would happen is the shadow would bleed over the flaw and actually look worse. So I'm calling that done. And then I'm gonna look up here uh, I do see some pores that are going to be minimized later, but I'm going to use a larger tool for that. Uh, let's see. Well, maybe this little spot here. And we'll call it done for the spot healing tool for this particular model. If you have an, a model with a lot of acne or scars, then you'll want to zoom in and take some time and kind of meticulously erase them with this tool. So moving on now. Now we're going to choose the healing brush tool which is also found under the band-aid. The second one down. And this one is for larger areas. And it, it works something like the clone stamp tool in that you select an area of texture that you would like to replicate. Um, 
So press the Alt button, and if you have a mouse, then you uh, Alt click. I have a pen and a tablet, so I Alt and then touch the area, the textured area that I would like to replicate. And like the clone tool, it will, as I'm moving, let's say I start here and move down, it will start to replicate the texture of the t-shirt. So I'll have to keep, keep, you know, reselecting the textured area. So be careful not to get into the shadowed area too much. So give it a moment. So that's good. And it's okay that it looks a little funny right now. Uh, we'll fix that in a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to select the skin texture again. And just a moment. I'm going to zoom out so I can see where the, the tool is working. You can see the little square down there. It's showing you that part of the neck that it's replicating. I don't want it to go down in a t-shirt because then I have to undo that spot and start over. So keep reselecting the neck. So I'm going to call that side of the face done. Select the neck again. actually going to undo that part because it started to pick up the shadow over here. So let me do it. It's always going to be a little bit of back and forth here and there when you're working on a photo. But less so after some practice. So I found that uh, noses can tend to look a little bit unnatural um, with this technique, although uh, we can make it work. You just have to do it the way that I showed you on the cheeks, but then erase back some of it. So again, we'll be choosing from the neck. So obviously that looks awful at this point, but let's use the eraser tool and set the flash at let's just start with 30% and then make it larger so that we can pretty much erase away quite a bit of it. And that was almost there. Okay. I'm going to do a little bit of erasing on the cheeks to kind of even out some of that grayness. And it is definitely normal for it to look a little unnatural at this point, so don't worry about that. Now we're moving on to the patch tool, and I'm going to use the patch tool to uh, 
correct or dramatically improve her under eye circles. And again, I'm not going to make her look like um, a mannequin. It's going to be something of a subtle improvement. So the patch tool can also be found under the band-aid. It's the third one down. And this can be used for dark circles, um, it can be used for bags under the eyes to um, improve them, again, without making the model look too fake. So we're going to use it to select the part, there we go. select the part that you would like to correct, and then drag it to a part of the face that has the texture you would like to replicate and just wait. And you can just deselect and you can see that there's an improvement without being overblown. Um, if you want to do it again for a better improvement, you can do that as well. Sometimes twice is the trick. Oops. So that's better. So I'm going to do the other one. Drag it down to the cheeks and then wait. Again, do it the second time. Okay. So, subtle improvement. So we're going to blur and blend this layer into the background. We've made the basic corrections now, so go to filter and then blur and then surface blur. And set the radius to um, 2 and then the threshold to 20 and then click OK. And then you'll see there's definitely been an improvement. And then zoom in. And choose the eraser tool. And set the hardness of the eraser tool to 50%. And choose a size. Uh, small enough to erase the interior of basically the eyeballs and the lips and uh, erase them at 100% opacity so let's turn it up back up to 100 and this will basically keep the eyes very sharply in focus which is really important in a portrait I'm going to go into the eyelashes and like the waterline a little bit. And don't worry about her hair, just erase over it like this. A little bit into the eyelashes. And I'm going to make the brush a little smaller for the lips. Again, erasing completely away. Now, I'm actually going to Blur this again once more with the same settings. And you can see by dragging this around that even though I'm blurring it again, the eyes are still erased. So click OK, and that will basically make the lines around the eyes 
completely blended and no sharp edges. So now is where the background comes in handy. You can change the opacity of the background copy layer generally somewhere between 40-70% um, so you can bring it down to zero and you can see all the, the flaws are still there start bringing it up for her to keep things fairly natural I'm going to set it at around 60 around 60% um, maybe even up to 70 70 looks great so, dramatically improved skin texture. Uh, the dark circles are softened, but she still has realistic skin texture. She still looks like she's not wearing makeup on her skin, which um, you know may or may not be important to whoever you're editing. But um, makeup is a different tutorial. <laughs> so now you can. Go ahead and flatten your image and you're all done.